Oh boy, this has been a very in-demand video and I'm serving it to you here. And so when it comes to the Sage, I have done a lot, a lot, a lot of research, number crunching, job comparisons to the most minute details. But one question that I've gotten so many times, like literally over 50 times, is exactly with a brand new job, how am I looking at structuring my hot bars and user interface for it? And I'm taking this really seriously since Sage is most likely the healer that I'm going to be taking into Dragonsong War Ultimate with my static, unless Expedient completely breaks the game somehow of course then I'll go scholar <laughs> right now the plan is sage and so I'm taking it super serious however big disclaimer and big warning here is sage does share a ton of skills with the scholar factually but how you want to structure and use those skills is in my opinion going to have some incredibly huge huge differences that I would not overlook and in fact my hotbars are going to reflect that. I detail the similarities and differences on my website htpsfx.gg in nauseating detail and I cannot get into that detail here because this video will literally become three hours long at least but these differences made me shake up my hotbars way more than I even I initially anticipated honestly. This video I initially was thinking maybe I'll just show my UI but then I'm just like that's probably actually useless so more than just throwing my planned hotbars at you I'm going to explain my reasoning since I suspect that will Help players a lot more than just a screeny and we're gonna just go tier by tier through the sage skills and my reasoning and preferences after 10 years of playing this game i am a hella opinionated mf'er <laughs> and in endwalker i am shaking out the cobwebs dusting everything and completely redesigning some things because i over the past 10 years have done some things consistently and then i'm like maybe i should stop doing that <laughs> examples include changing my asuna button i've never hotkeyed to sprint before and yes gasp i know that's terrible the first thing i should say is probably my equipment here because a lot of people are just like oh my god they probably have the big mmorpg mouse no i actually have never <laughs> had the privilege of having one of those so i'm using literally a basic keyboard a basic mouse i have like forward and butt back buttons on my mouse uh this mouse does actually have dpi buttons to that are like inner in the inside of the mouse which will allow me to press those as options uh you can configure them actually in the razor thing uh not sponsored by razor for the record i just bought their products years ago this mouse is actually years old um but aside from that i really have nothing fancy in terms of equipment everything is generic keyboard mouse standard okay now part one and i'm gonna go through this step by step like i said earlier and i'm gonna use a blank keybind sheet for my character showing the keys i press that i'm gonna fill in as i go face by face i'm gonna go through the easiest skills to place in my opinion and do this layer by layer so the first layer is dps skills and dosis is slotting into broya's spot at one this also means that eucrasian dosis will be a press of eucrasia and then one to get that dot out there toxicon is going to be directly ruin two equivalent and dyscrasia is directly art of war now phlegma is a little bit more thought involved into it it is a skill that i rolled a lot about in my mind thinking about where to place it and to be frank 45 seconds is a longer cooldown for a prime hotkey location but i decided to put it actually at two it's going to be a dps skill a dot moving to like the one key makes it easy to slot in there that key is working for me i've tried it on different classes and different characters like trying to simulate it with my hand movement uh, yeah guys i actually really tried for this and i actually was like what actually feels right to me uh but for me two felt right for me it felt good not to mention like i do in my ultimate stage guide talk about like the 60 second raid buff windows and how flagma placement is going to be good in there or really important in there rather and i'm going to often need to fit in two i'm going to need to fit into into my opener i'm going to need to fit it every third raid buff window so let's get comfy with phlegma and can again amen phlegma balls so the next layer is going to be basic heals diagnosis is going to take adlo spot and prognosis takes sucker spot i acknowledge up front that getting used to pressing control one would take me a long time and so i'm just gonna make it stay to adlo spot on control plus two i have different plans for control plus one my long-standing tradition of control plus one basically not being a pressed key for a decade is indeed being changed in endwalker these are truly the end of days i'm gonna skirt over you creation for a little bit here just to give a bit more framework of why i'm putting it where i'm gonna put it guys so let's talk about ogcd basic heals Viz's is whispering dawn so it's just gonna go right there and hollows is quite literally fey blessing and so i know it will shock many people that I'm actually not going to be putting it on G like I do on Scholar, and instead it's Control plus 1. To be frank, this is prime key real estate, and while it will take a lot of getting used to, I do see Holos as being an essential tool to use often. It costs you nothing, why not? Plus, I have plans for the GG key. Good game. Now, Outer Skull abilities are essentially one-to-one -one copies of Scholars, so the keybinds are the same for Caracol, Drocol, Exocol, and while Taracol is arguably different than Excog, it's going to Excog. 
I'm not making it complex. Likewise, I'm going to throw Pepsis on the same key as Emergency Tactics since their use case is the same. I want shields to heals. Well, you know what? It's the same button. Now for roll actions, and I try very, very hard to keep these on the same buttons, and you will notice at the very end of the video I'm going to shift around rescue, but these need to be reflexively hit when the time comes up to hit them. Like, instinctually, you should be hitting, like, Swift Cast Revive or Swift Cast AoE Heal. Especially as a healer, that is huge. Anti-knockback should be reflexively hit when needed, and so on and so forth. So the same spots other than Asuna, because Asuna, however, is very, very niche. And I had it at Control Plus 5 literally for, like, a decade now. And so since that's a super nice, super nice, but also super niche button, that is going to the upper inner mouse button with the Control key. I know that's really wonky, but that's where it goes, and it, ironically enough, does feel comfortable to me. Now let's talk mobility abilities, because this took a lot of time, uh, actually a lot of time, because we do not have a healer with a mobility ability, and I'm like, oh, uh, how do I simulate this? But, uh, exploring it, Black Mage, um, and all this stuff, I really came to the conclusion for me is that space is jump and I went and I took the V key just because it's so similar on a normal QWERTY keyboard and I decided V key is going to be Icarus and that's going to be our gap closer or ally jump mobility ability. V just made sense. Now sprint which I have not put on my hotbars for a decade for the first time in a decade is put it on a proper key bind. It is going to be control or how to say it for the first time I mean, I had it on control equals. I know it's in every footage, but I never really pressed that keybind. But now it's going to be on control plus V. So V is really like V for Vendetta? No, not quite. It is V for Icarus or V for Sprint. Move very, very, very fast. V for very fast. I'm fast AF boy. Now we have reached the point of the video where it literally took me hours of thinking, and I am not exaggerating, unfortunately, hours of trying and testing and stuff, and really... This is where we start to deviate hugely from Scholar. And so, Eucrasia, I want to put this on E, but that felt weird, especially because I might cast it multiple times in a row. Maybe F, maybe Control plus E. No, 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 none of that felt right. It actually felt really, really wrong. I actually had to place it on the lower mouse button, the back button, if you would. This takes the place of the fairy's movement ability, where I would always place the fairy. Which, if I'm being frank with you, I expected to put Cardia on, if you asked me a few weeks ago. But no, Cardia weaving is actually going to be still essential and important, so I see myself, um, emergency pressing when I'm not expecting it to press Eucrasia more during an emergency. So Cardia is actually going to be the upper forward mouse button where Fey Illumination is for me currently on Scholar. And if this surprises other people, this actually did surprise me, but it did feel accessible enough while feeling good for Cardia weaving. So it worked for me. This led into a comfortable Soteria spot of control mouse down button. As I said, Cardia being up button kind of shocked me at first, but it felt comfortable after a little bit of practice, but Soteria is still control mouse button, which is what I initially expected for this skill when I first saw it. So Zoe and Rizomata are the two abilities that are essentially Scholar's Recitation ability cracked into its two major components. Both are on a 90 second cooldown timer though, so I did want to put them where Scholar's Recitation was. No. Shockingly, no. Even though Recitation there perfectly works for me. It is perfect. I will not move Recitation going into Endwalker, but I put these instead on the inner mouse buttons, not the control key associated, because I feel like pressing them every 90 seconds most likely will be happening. I don't want to have them hidden behind the control modifier, but I cannot justify a hotkey spot on three like Recitation, because Recitation is a powerful double whammy of an emergency button that I could justify. These components on their own, not so much. Rizomata, do I expect to hit it every 90 seconds? 100% so I'm going to use it a lot, but am I using it in an emergency when I'm not expecting it? Probably not. If I'm down on, like, Sir Adder Skull, I almost said Serpent Skull again, I am not going to be just waiting for that skill. I'm going to be popping it, because every time that that is doing a full 90 seconds on cooldown, you're losing a charge. I am not going to do that. I'm going to treat it very similar to Aether Blow. I cannot imagine myself not. Scholar for so long, I cannot imagine a world where I'd sit on it. So, however, I do see myself wanting in a pinch, but I do see myself also pairing it with something like Zoe with Numa, for instance. It's just a lot more of a deliberate skill, where as recitation in Dawn was a, a, a lot more like, boom, we need the healing right F now. Now here's where I start to sweat because as most have noticed by now, we're running out of what I'd call prime keybind real estate with some intensely powerful abilities still on hold. Numa is an absolute godsend of an ability. This ability is one of my favorite abilities ever added into the entire game. It combined with Zoe becomes an 800 potency AoE heal that also deals damage, that also procs cardia, that also applies a 20% mitigation. The amount of use cases that this single 
ability can cover is obscene. Even if you are using just the mitigation part, even if you are just using the heal part, there is so much that you get from this. But is it a damaging ability? By technical direct truth, yes, it has the same potency of damage as Dosis. But that's the thing, it has the exact same potency as Dosis, so rather than a damaging skill, I see it fully as a healing skill that simply allows you to recuperate damage in some form and a cardio proc that would otherwise be lost. Plus, with its longer 120 second cooldown timer, while I do want to find used way ways to use it non-stop, it is still long. So it does not, in my mind, deserve to be in the 3 spot, because that is like the hot, hot key spot. It is, however, the reason why I, for the first time in 10 freaking years, have moved Isuna is gonna be control 5 for the Numa skill that really <laughs> formulates the large buffet of different control augmented skills in being AoE healing specific. And when it comes to powerhouse abilities, one that is slept on for sure is Krasis. This amplifies healing actions by 20%. Healing actions, not just healing magic potency like uh, dissipation, so all of the sages heals. This ability is ludicrous. This makes single target barriers and heals supercharged, and on a short cooldown, I can actually justify it on three. 60 second cooldown is very short. I see myself eagerly spamming this ability. Even 20% more on cardio procs is going to be, oh, chef's kiss. Now, the capstone abilities, Haima and Panheima, ham and pineapple, sorry, I need to always say that. That is like my thing now for say <laughs> Panheima and Panheima, ham and pineapple, is uh, Panheima, honestly, for me, fits beautifully into G. It's just like, GG, boom, <laughs> we're all good. But it's oddly enough comfortable enough with me because of my ass with neutral sect. I had G on that all through this expansion and it just worked really well. Long in the lore of days past though, I unironically kept Fae Union as my single target buffer on control F, F to pay respects, right? <laughs> That's also why I keep Civ cast on F, <laughs> because usually it's like someone died and then I'm Civ casting. I, I know, my keybinds are stupid, I know, but they're mine. But um, single target Haima is going to be going there, and I know from Horoscope on Ask that this works well. I know from the past with Faye Union it works well. Control plus F for Haima definitely will work. Also beside each other on the keyboard, it just it just works for me really well. So embarrassing admission time, but I'm just gonna be blunt with y'all, and I think that a lot of people are not willing to say this, but I will say it, is dissipation with its drawbacks. I made it so that I did not have a keybind for it. Explicitly made sure I didn't have a keybind for it. This is because when I press it, I always wanted to be very cognizant of the drawbacks because the drawbacks, are they something that you can manage? 100%, there is a place for dissipation almost in every single fight. It is a very powerful skill but you want to be aware of when you're using it and that in your brain you just have this checklist of like, oh, is this condition, this condition, and then you meet it. So I never actually keybound dissipation. Fizz's two, however, is for the sage. Dissipation's less restrictive, but also less potent little brother that I want to keybind for. It boosts healing similar to Fey Illumination's use case. It boosts everyone's healing, so your co-healers as well. I, I, how to say it, the added heal over time effect, however, is juicy in and on its own, and I expect to use it quite significantly often. I do see this almost being on cooldown for me. Maybe even, uh, yeah, I do actually see, depending on the kind of content, if I don't need to hold it, I see myself using it on cooldown. So this is actually going to boot off the roll action rescue, which I did mention was going to happen before, which to be frank in standard gameplay, I shouldn't even need that often, like it shouldn't take up such a powerful keybind for me. And Fae Illumination's old spot was the up mouse button, but since it's a 180 second cooldown and it's now guarded by a control modifier press, it feels right to have Fizz's 2 at this key slot. That as well as Cardio weaving is there and no like no cardio modifier is up there. Basically, this just feels right to me. I don't know if a lot of people will see my reasoning in it, but it felt really right for me. This lets me shift rescue into um shift, I guess. I'm gonna shift this player to a different place with rescue. I, I don't know, that's how I remember things sometimes. I, I remember stuff through dumb stuff. You don't even want to know how I remember cadaver anatomy stuff. I had to have a joke for everything. Van is vein artery nerve and that's gonna be between the rib cage. I, mean, I have like an endless amount of memorization techniques. None of them are standard. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Sage's Revive Agario is gonna be put on the control modifier inner mouse button beside Asuna. Like I still want to click it. <laughs> I'm still gonna want to click it into Antwalker, but I do want to try and make a stronger effort to keybind it. This one did feel natural when I play tested. It was rough to get used to, but it worked. Anyhow, I'm wrapping up this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Stay safe and have a glorious day.